Uh, today we have a 55 inch Samsung TV and this TV has pretty much half a picture. So I'm just going to plug it in. Should automatically come on. Yep, there it goes. So we got something here on the side. There we are. Voila. As you can see, the left side is completely dark. The right side, we have a picture. All right, so let's see what the fuck is going on. Shy Town's finest. Okay, just to verify the model number of this TV, this is a UN55NU7100F, and this box right here is where you're going to find the ex actual extended model number, which is the FXZA. Okay, it depends on the country, I think the A stands for America, um, and the C will stand for Canada. Um, but. A very important number is where it says right here, version number, okay? See, it says FA01. Okay, you actually use that with ordering uh, a lot of Samsung uh, LED strips. It may be different, but the main thing is when you're ordering the main board, okay? Main board, T-Con board. Uh, power supplies are usually the same, uh, but if you're ordering a main board for this TV, for instance, you actually use a model number and the version number, uh, if you actually didn't want to take the TV apart and actually get the main board part number right off of the main board, you would have to use the version number. They have different versions of the same TV with the same model number, but different, I know kind of, I'm upside down, so that's why, <laughs> it's with different version numbers, okay? So this would be a FA01 version of the model UN55NU7100. FXZA. Okay. All right. So, obviously, uh, this TV has absolutely no screws, uh, just like some of the other ones that I did, <clears throat> and uh, I did videos on, and also the Curve TV is made like this also. So there are some tools that they make to get the back cover off. Once you get the back cover pried up, you're going to have to use this to go around the edges. Um, I have some more videos on that if you want to see that but the main thing is to pry up the back cover and there's some holes in the bottom a hole here and also a hole on this side okay to stick this in um, and I pry up the bottom okay enough that way we can stick this in all the way around okay so you see we have a hole here there's also a hole on the other side, right here. And we stick this in there, if I'm doing this right, okay? And we pry that up, okay? A little, right? And I'm also gonna just do the other side right fast. This is already pried up a little bit, so that's probably why it's not making a clicking sound uh, when I pry it up. But, if I pry this up, I'm actually gonna try to get this up under here, okay? hear it and I can actually go all the way around just kind of pry it up see just kind of lift up on it as you're sliding this down like so so you start hearing the clicking okay Part. It's a little tricky at first, um, but you just keep doing it. Um, obviously, something's gonna give. 
And then when it starts giving a little bit, you can actually just use your fingers and your hand and kind of um, help it. See, there we go. Voila. Okay. I'm gonna look up under here to make sure there's no wires connected to the back cover, like for the power button. And there is not. And so that came up pretty easily. Okay. All right, so I'll just to give you a basic rundown of what this TV, what the inside of this TV consists of. We have our main board, okay? This main board is always the board that has all, always has the connections, HDMI, uh, mic in, um, digital out, all that stuff on there. It's on the side. It's usually on the side or on the back, okay, of the TV. In this case, it's on the side of the TV, all the connectors right there, all right? Okay. And as you can see, um, those are all of our connectors right here on the side. This is our Wi-Fi module, right? So we know this is a smart TV, okay? And this, of course, are the antennas for the Wi-Fi module. Now, this Wi-Fi module uh, looks like it does not come up. It's actually soldered into the board, to the main board. So if you have a problem that if you have a problem with a Wi-Fi where you're not getting Wi-Fi on the TV, right? It won't connect or whatever. Um, you probably have to order the whole main board or you can probably order the Wi-Fi module and have to do <clears throat> a little soldering, all right? Which would probably be cheaper anyway, right? Okay, and obviously these are our speakers, one left and right. Our power supply board, okay? And this is not used a separate T-Con board. Actually, part of it is built onto the main board and I guess on one of these driver boards at the bottom where these two uh, flex ribbon connectors are going to. All right, well, let's take a look. What we're mainly concerned about is uh, the backlights because we have a dark picture on one side, okay? So that means that uh, this is an edge lit TV, okay? And you can always tell an edge lit, an edge -lit TV because the TV is much thinner and it's much heavier, right? Okay, so the, instead of the strips being behind the screen and rolls like the videos that i've been doing uh actually the actual strips are either going to be on a roll on the top shining the light that way or they're going to be a roll of strips or the top or bottom and if the, if the strips are on the top they're going to be shining the light down instead of toward the screen and they shine the light down into a big plexiglass looking clear screen that takes that light and spreads it around the screen so you can see the picture okay but anyway um our power supply board and our leds is what we're concerned about now if you watch my other video on the 50 inch which i'll link to this video um you can see that our power supply board okay is always in 90 percent of the cases or 95 percent of the cases is where our leds are going to be plugged into into the power supply board on almost any and every LED TV. All right, so uh, as you can see, this is the plug right here that's going to the main board, okay? All right, all right. And this is our LED plug, all right? This plug right here is going to the LEDs, okay? So it doesn't use a separate wire, it just goes, and this goes right into the TV connected to the LEDs somewhere either on the top or the bottom. Got me? All right, so if we look right next to that board, if my camera can pull this, can pull this just job off right here. If I can get zoom in that close, there we go. All right, so this, this plug for the LEDs is plug number CNL801. And as you can see, we have four lines, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, one, two, three, four. Very easy. Okay, so this is our legend here. And as you can see, this marks pin one, okay? So we have 12 pins, but only eight of them are connected. As you can see on the legend, uh, the 9, 10, 11, 12, there's no connection. All right, maybe for a bigger TV or 75 or something like that. Uh, but um, pin one is where the arrow is, okay? That would be pin one. One plus, one plus, one minus, two plus, two minus, three, so on and so on. So what we're gonna do, 
I know a lot of guys don't have LED checkers. Um, I'm gonna start off by checking this with my meter, okay? I put my meter in DC volts, okay? All right, ground our lead. Anywhere metal on the chassis. Okay, I'm gonna use this here. Okay, this is our clips. I'm just gonna stick it right in between there. Make sure it's steady, okay? Or not steady, make sure it's um, secure. As you can see right there, all right? If you want, you can use the alligator clip and, and, and ground it here on the power supply board on the cold side, okay, not the hot side. But just anywhere on the chassis is fine, okay, because the chassis was med metal, and as you can see, that's all ground, okay? And I'm gonna take my positive lead, I'm gonna plug, plug the TV in, all right? I'm just gonna show you how I do this right fast, so before I even actually do it, where I'm gonna put my positive lead. See, I, I can pull this off. <laughs> Good old camera tricks, huh? Okay, where am I? All right, here we go. All right, so. Should be close enough so you can see. I'm gonna do my positive lead, okay? And I'm gonna go one. We should be getting the plus, the, that's the B plus voltage to light the strip up. The next one, the minus one, one minus, the next one, that's the return voltage. We should be getting something there. Okay, it should not be zero, and it should not be the same as the plus voltage, all right? And then next one, two, two minus, okay? So the minus voltage should be a lot less than the positive voltage, right? The plus voltage, okay? That the minus is the return voltage, or return line is the voltage across each LED on the strip after it gets you know, on the other end, right? After the voltage drops across each LED, the voltage that's left over is the return voltage, okay? And that's how the um, the feedback circuit works on the power supply, all right? To turn the TV set, to shut the TV set down if there's a problem or whatever, you know what I'm saying? It, it, can't re it relies on that feedback voltage. All right, so I'm gonna put a different angle so you can actually see my meter. You will actually see the backlight shine through the TV when it comes on. All right, bingo, we got action. Yep, we got action. All right, we got backlights through the TV. As you can see right here, the TV is on. So we got backlights here, 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 here. And there's nothing on that side. It looks like saw dark, see? All right, so. I'm gonna go to the first wire or plug, number one, pin number one. And just for me, uh, my experience working on these TVs, it should be about 180 or 90 volts. All right. Meters of DC volts, okay. TV is on. And we have 190 volts on pin one. That's one plus, okay? Go to pin two, which is one minus. We should have a return voltage. More than 20 or 30 volts, I would probably guess. Um, that is not good. Because that means there's no voltage at the other end of the LED strip, which means there may be an open LED. Now, I'm gonna go to the pin three, which is two plus. That should be the B plus or the 190 volts. Pin three, one, two, three. Okay, we have 190 volts. All right, that's a B plus voltage. And the return, which is pin four, uh, that will be the two minus line two, the return line for line two, one volt. All right, fluctuated pretty badly. All right, so we go to Pin five, which is three plus. Okay, that's probably our other strip. It's probably uses two strips. All right. Same thing, our B plus is good, 190. Okay, so mainly we're checking the B plus. Ooh, if that's all, the, well, then we know the power supply is working. Okay, as far as the LED circuit is concerned. So we are steady, we're get, we are getting a steady 190 volts on all of the plus lines. All right, and I'm going to go to three minus. And there we go, we have 70 volts, okay? So 
So that means that we have a return voltage. So all those LEDs on that strip are most likely good. Okay. All right. And then our last line, pin seven, that is four plus 190 again. It's all good. And then the return line is 70 volts again. All right. So we do have a problem with these, uh, the first two lines, line one and line two, we're not getting any return voltage at all. Okay. So that means that we have an open LED on those strips or strip. Okay. I think each strip has two lines on it, but don't want to get confused. All that we know now, the main thing is that yes, we have an LED problem. Okay. So now we have to begin to pull this baby apart and replace the LED strips. All right. So let's do that. Okay, the first thing we're gonna be concerned about is taking, is getting rid of our outer bezel that's gonna have to come off first before we can remove the screens because we have to remove all that to get to the actual LED strips or LED lights, all right? So always have some markers. Always have some markers when you're disassembling these kind of TVs, okay? It's gonna make it much easier when you put it back together. I see, obviously, first thing I'm gonna do is take off my speakers, okay? Because they're gonna be in the way. So these speakers are connected in some type of a series thing here. So when this, the main speaker plug is on the actual main board, 99% of the TVs, speakers are connected to the main board right here. All right. And as you can see, it's connected from the wire going from this speaker back to this one. So there's no connection on this one. So I'm just gonna pull, first of all, I'm gonna have to get rid of this um, wire right here. This wire that's going down to the light slash infrared detector slash button, right? Power button, see if you only have one button, all right? So make sure that you keep the remote, the original remote for these TVs. And I don't know if this one slides out or let's see here. It doesn't look like it. So I'm just going to uh, pull this connector out. I can't see it on camera, but it's really easy. Just uh, I'll push it down. There's a little tab right here, you push it down, loosen it up, and pull it. Come on. Pull it right out, okay? That's out of the way. And our speaker should come right up. Right, the two, the tab right here on the side, a blue tab here, the one on this side. Just They just push in there, just lift it up, comes right up, same here. Only goes on one way, obviously, right? You can't put them on this way, okay? So, just worry about that. Just know where the holes are at. So, hole here, hole here, hole here, hole here, okay? Only goes on one way, right? All right. Get these out of the way, okay? Now, the next thing I want to do before I make any kind of moves is I want to remember to do this is, um, <coughs> let's see, I'm going to do this. I'm actually going to remove these LDVS cables, okay? All right, and that's for safety purposes in case we test fire the TV up before we completely reassemble the TV. We don't want anything, any voltage coming through here and touching the metal chassis, okay? So I'm just gonna disconnect it from here also, because these are long, and actually just un put the tabs up and just pull it right out. It's a little tape off of here. Okay. And if you want, you can mark that also, but the one's longer than the other one, it should be. And um, it comes right out. Put the tab up. Put the tab up, tab up down here. Okay. And lift right up on it. And be careful when you're pulling this out. Don't try to yank it out or anything because you will damage the little pins. These are a bunch of uh, contacts on each side. So obviously here is the four, the, the stand or the feet that go on here. Uh, actually, she had the TV in the box in the garage, so I, I don't know if she had it on the wall or what, but there was no feet on here. But anyway, I'm just gonna mark these. There's one here, there's one here. So obviously there was some feet that go on each side of the TV that screw into these holes here. So you can put the TV on the shelf or on the desk or something like that. So I'm just gonna mark that. 
so I know I'm not forgetting something when I put this TV back together. Okay. I'm not going to mark on this side. So these two actually look the same. There's no left and right. All right. And I'm also going to mark the screws. Okay. Mark the screws mixed up. Mark the screws and mark the screw hole. Screws. Screw hole. Okay. Slide right out. Put that in the screws together. All right. So we also need to free our driver boards uh, that are under these metal shields. Okay metal brackets plates whatever you want to call them okay it looks like this is all one piece go from here all the way to here and there's some little let's see how this is made here some little tabs right here on top um that i think we have to unpry like right there okay so let's see here i mean this 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 when you're doing this, don't rush. Just kind of look at it real good and do a little concentration, <laughs> a little meditating or whatever you have to do before you start sticking screwdrivers in there. Because remember, these driver boards are underneath here. So you don't want to stick like a long screwdriver up in there and try to pull this up and damage the driver boards, all right? Okay, so let's figure this out for a minute. Okay, I just realized that in order, in order for us to remove this bracket, uh, one of the flip the TV around and pull off the outer bezel first. Okay, because there are some um, This bracket is actually connected up under here it has some clips up under here on this bracket And we can't get to it unless we remove this outer bezel. Okay now on the outer bezel As you can see there's one clip right here Just take our prior tool or whatever you got and just unclip it. Okay, and it's a clip here and just look for the clips all the way around and it should come right up these clips on the bottom are going to be a pain um you almost have to break them uh, some of these to get the bottom part of the outer bezel uh, up but we'll find out once we uh, flip it around and see okay
Okay. Now that we've got our outer bezel off, okay, which is a little tedious, but it's probably easier if you use a smaller table, like a car table, uh, as long as the TV is not overlapping the size of the table, because you don't want the table pushing in up on the screen. Uh, so that way, these both of these ends are sticking out, right, and you can just, instead of moving the TV, you can just go from one end, do that side, and go on the other end, maybe pull out a little bit and do that side, and just move it up and down for the top and bottom. But anyway, uh, like I was explaining to you about that metal bracket that's covering the driver boards. Um, as you can see, there are some tabs right here, here, um, let's see, here. Okay, just unloosen those. Okay, just pull these out. So I want to let me try this one first. Pull that out. There we go. So the elbow went down. Pull it out like that. Next one. All right. Being very careful not to touch these ribbon uh, COF cables, uh, chip on film cables, going to the driver boards, or going to the screen from the driver boards. Um, do not crunch those, do not damage those, try not to even touch them, all right, because if these are damaged, if one of these are damaged, what you're gonna ha what's gonna happen is you're gonna have lines in the screen, and unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about that, uh, but replace the screen, uh, which you cannot do, all right, it's not cost efficient, if, if, if it was available, but like I said, I'm gonna go all the way down, and that slides right out. Easy peasy, right? Do not forget to put that back on, okay? And remember it only goes on one way. Alright. Like this. Okay. Just cut out part. It's for away the uh the uh, LDBS connector from the main board. That's the gap right here, okay? Clips or well, the clips are right here, so it only goes on one way, it doesn't go on. Don't try to do it this way, <laughs> right? Okay, so, all right. So, and then we're gonna have to release our driver boards, which should be fairly easy. All right, so just pull the tape off. Some grounded tape, looks like. I'm gonna pull that off. And remember, you do not want to flip the TV around or over while the outer bezel is out because the screen is gonna fall out. And uh, you're gonna just, you know, this is gonna be over with, right? It's gonna be, you're gonna be done then after that one. The screen falls out and cracks. So just do everything while the TV is laying on its back. Okay. This tape is it's very irritating here. I don't know why the, uh, okay, so this should, Slide right out. Comes down. Slides out. There we go. Excellent. Excellent. We just lift the part towards you down after you pull the tape off. And it should slide right out. Okay. Voila, there we go. And pull that over, I'm just gonna tape this to the screen. Right, which is a little play in it, you don't wanna actually bend those too much. All right. Because these have traces, as you can see, these are ICs on each of these cables, okay? And that's what addresses the pixels inside of the screen to turn on, off, or change colors or how it's made up. All right, so don't put the tape on any of these cables right here. Okay, just take the board to the screen like so. That way I won't snag it when I get ready to pull it up. Pull the screen out. The screen should come right out. Right? And also, check 
all of your corners to see how the screen is laying in here. Okay, there's also some type of a stopper or end. There's one here, okay, and this right here, screen goes inside of that notch, okay, that notch, there's some notches on the side here, and on the bottom here, okay, so just make sure the screen is perfectly centered in there, how you took it out, because you do not want it to overlap, because once again, you're going to be in some big trouble. Viewer of mine, leave me a comment saying he didn't have such a cup of trying to pull out with his hand and end up cracking the screen. Yes, that will happen. Um, I can't really say much on such a cups because these I can't find anywhere. Um, these are the ones I've been using for years. These that you get off Shop Jimmy, um, they are not reliable. Um, I hate to say it, I love Shop Jimmy for parts and stuff, but these will actually slip, come off. So, um, my advice is to look for anything that pulls glass or dents out of cars. Just go online, which I haven't did, which I should have did, I could have referred you to somebody, and look for a, a suction cup dent pullers or a, a picking up glass. Okay, all right, so, yeah. So even one of these is still getting a little weak after years, but so I'm just sure keep, keep them clean, spray a little you know, glass cleaner on there and just wipe them off every once in a while. So what I'm just gonna do is just put this right here on each end, I want to press down a little bit, not too hard, squeeze them, press down a little bit, squeeze them, and the screen should come right up. Hold it tight, voila. See how fragile the screen is? Yeah, you don't want to crack that. Okay, so this is the bottom of the TV here, facing toward me. So what I'm gonna usually do is grab a marker, and I'm actually gonna mark, there actually like three screens here. I'm actually gonna mark there's one, there's one there, might be two, maybe there's a thick one right here, okay, which the rough side is facing toward me, the smooth side is facing toward the bottom. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark, put a small dot in the very corner so you won't see it through the teeth um, of when the TV is on. We put a mark right here in the corner, on the left corner. I'm also gonna mark these brackets, the diffuser holder brackets, I'm gonna mark that in blue. Okay, and we mark the chassis here in blue on the bottom so I know which way these brackets and which way the screen goes. Keep these screens together. Um, we have some tape on the sides. I'm gonna pull the tape up so the screen can come right up. I need tape on the top. Um, nope, there's no tape on the top. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna take these two screens here. One, two, keep them together. Don't take them off one at a time and then just put them anywhere. Keep them together, get my blue dot, so I know that this space is, this part goes in this corner and it's facing me. All right, I'm gonna grab both of these screens. So obviously the top part goes on first because there's little clips up there. All right, so as you can see, we have two screens. Okay, there's a thin one, there's a thick one at the bottom. All right, I'm gonna keep these together. I'm gonna put these ladies right in front of my original real screen. Now, as usual, with these TVs, it's gonna be a crack in the screen. Uh, I think Samsung kinda made a boo-boo on this TV, because every one I did like this, uh, when the LEDs blow out, there's a crack in what they call this main diffuser screen right here. Okay, or somewhere where the, that's probably the, the LEDs are burnt at, what happens is the heat, uh, by it heating it up and cooling, the heat from the LEDs actually puts a crack in this big diffuser screen, okay? So, before we check this out, we're gonna have to remove our brackets, okay? So this will be fairly easy. Uh, looks like, as you can see, we'll just put this up under here and start the clipping. Get the sides come off first. I get some small ones to get up under there. Let's do 
that all the way around, take the sides off first. Uh, get something thin or even thinner than this because this is not actually cutting it. Um, but I'm still working with it. Okay. Okay. Oh, this tool comes in pretty handy as far as that's concerned. Uh, this end right here. I can stick these right up under the right up under there and those clips come right in loose. Okay, so There we go. That's one side. So I did mark my corners, right? Mark the corner in blue. So I know that's for that edge. And I'm gonna proceed to take off the other side. Okay, now that I have my diffuser screen brackets off, I can actually see what happened is that these LEDs, these are the LED strips across the, um, is that the bottom of the TV? Yes, the part the bottom of the TV. Okay, they're on the bottom. And is it the bottom or top? Let's see. Yeah, that's the bottom. That's where our wire goes for our <clears throat> button at the bottom. As you can see, let me zoom in is they actually burnt or melted the, 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 uh, the thick diffuser screen. Okay, this is the actual diffuser screen right here. Okay, and they got a crack in it, okay? So as you can see, those are our bad LEDs. The side's not lighting up because they're all burnt up, the LEDs. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull the screen out. Now, like I said, uh, Samsung, I don't know what happened with this TV, uh, kind of a bad design or either the material or the LEDs are, are kind of designed wrong. So I'm going to put on some, you put some latex gloves on anything, I'm going to try to pull the screen out, alright, if I can. And it's actually some white paper bundle here. Okay, so yeah, I got them both. Okay. And I'm actually gonna keep these together. And I know this go, I know this goes, I have to mark the screen because I know because of the burn marks. <laughs> that that's the bottom, right? All right, so we'll just pull this out. This is the screen that actually diffuses the light from across the whole entire screen from the bottom. All right, so. Turn this around. Uh, you should get a better angle at what's going on here. So obviously that was the side that wasn't lighting up. And um, here are our LEDs right here. Okay. That's the one strip. The strip that was good. I'm just gonna change them both. Because I do not want to go back in the TV again. All right, so and that's the good strip. That's the plug um, right there with that strip with the two lines on it, as you can see. And if we go to our other strip, you can see we got one burnt right there. Okay, D9, that's burnt. All right, and we go down 
We can actually see that's the plug. Even the plug is burnt. Wow, that's insane. Woo! <laughs> wow, that is insane, right? And as you can see, we got a bunch of burnt ones. So yeah, that strip is shot. Okay, so so we're gonna pull up and find my new strips and pull those out. Hopefully that connector is still good. The actual connector, if not, we just have to jump something. There's no big deal on that, right? It's connected right here. Okay, we just pull this out. Okay, looks good. Okay, we just find out once we put the new strips back in there and uh, plug it back in. But other than that, looks like we should be in good shape, all right? Okay, I got my new strips. These are brand new strips. There is no left or right. Uh, they're the same strip for each side. Okay, so I do have two. And the part number for all the strips for this model TV is a BN96-459-1. One three A as an alpha. Okay, so yep. Uh, a lot of people been asking me why the only thing I do is LED videos. Okay, um, mostly uh, eighty percent of my videos are for LED problems or LED replacement strips. Uh, number one is that's pretty much nowadays pretty much the problem with about eighty percent of the TVs or even close to 90% of the TVs that they have the LED problem, especially we have sound with no picture. Um, the TVs that have problems like with the boards and stuff, uh, because I work out of my home, right? Um, I don't have much space here. So those that I, you know, I work in the field, okay? So I don't have anybody like bringing me stuff unless it's like a long time customer, friend or family member. So the board replacements I do in the home, that way I don't have to put the TV set up. And I don't, of course, if I do it in the house, that means I can't make a video out of it. I'll, I'll try sometimes, but it's kind of awkward being in somebody's house and you got kids running around and people standing over you, watching you, asking you questions and stuff like that. You know, how long have you been doing this? And, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, my uncle, he was a TV prayer guy back in 1968. I'm like, well, you know, I, I wasn't even born in, you know, you know, maybe you know him. No, I don't know him, you know. But anyway, and uh, number two, the main reason is, uh, well, one of the main reasons is that uh, I figured out that most people, uh, of, of, there's a bigger audience for doing this stuff because quite naturally if you think about it technicians like me who are looking at you know TV repair videos or, or whatever right um, that's a smaller audience than say for an audience that's like a consumer who doesn't have any electronics background at all and they're just trying to fix the TV okay so that's a much bigger audience so evidently I get more views on just you know learn how to teach somebody how to troubleshoot uh, a main board, a power supply board with a meter, you know what I'm saying? And you just look at my channel yourself and see for yourself, okay? The most views I get are the ones with the LED problems, okay? Mm -hmm. And while I'm, while I'm mentioning that, uh, another thing that I wasn't gonna say anything, because you know, I've been doing this, uh, you know, I've been doing YouTube videos for a while now, uh, probably going on like eight years, you know? And I'm not a big YouTuber, I don't have like a million subscribers and that, all that. And I never consider myself an expert or anything. I'm just a TV repair guy, okay? You guys leave me comments saying you don't know what you're doing. You don't know how to troubleshoot uh, TCOM boards. You don't know how to troubleshoot the panel. Uh, you know, you, you're soft. You had well, one guy say I was soft, a weak in the field. My thing is, I never claim to be an expert at anything, okay? All I'm trying to do is help people fix their TV. Okay, mostly consumers and some technicians, okay? Um, my thing is, if you wanna leave me a whole ass comment like that, my thing is, I will not check, when I click on your name, you ain't got not one video, okay, on electronics showing how, what, what you know or whatever. I don't care if you an engineer at NASA, right? You are not in my league, okay? You are way out of my league, stay in your place by leaving them whole ass comments like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm humble, okay? I take it, people leave me advice. Real technicians leave me advice. You guys telling me you, you don't know what the hell you doing and and um, you weak and you know you don't have enough experience. Well, first of all, first of all, if you was a real technician and not a wannabe or a fake technician, 
you wouldn't be even saying putting them whole ass comments on somebody's video, right? I don't know how many, I've been watching YouTube for eight years, bro. And this is, I got to I got the truth. I've been watching YouTube just as much as I've been making videos. I know I watch YouTube all day and all night, whether it's on electronics or on cars or whatever. I have never, I don't believe, maybe like once or twice out of eight years, I've left somebody a thumbs down in the video. If I see a technician and he's doing something wrong, in my opinion, or he doesn't know how to troubleshoot that good, I'm not gonna go on this damn video and be like, ah oh, man, you're not a good troubleshooter, man. You're supposed to check this and check that first. You know, what, what, what are you doing, you fucking rookie? You know what I'm saying, that's stupid. Ain't no real technician gonna do, don't do, don't, don't. A real technician is not going to put comments like that on somebody's video that's trying to, I'm just thankful it got to me, okay? Like that's starting, right? Okay, so my thing is, if you gonna make whole ass comments, but you don't know what the hell you doing, and, that's, you know, uh, anything like that, you you weak, um, you ain't got no experience and shit while you're doing YouTube videos. Click, when I click on your fucking video, on your channel, you better have some fucking good ass motherfucking videos, okay? If not, stay in your place. Cause you're either one, a hater, right? Number two, you're a wannabe technician. Or number three, you're some 18, 19, 20 year old kid who ain't got shit else to do but leave bad comments and thumbs downs on people's videos and shit because it's time for you to, uh, because you still stand with your mommy and shit, right? So you can find your room, so that's all I don't you get to fucking do and shit, right? So, but anyway, <laughs> enough of that. All right, I want to get out of that off my chest, right? And I know, like I said, I've been doing, I get a lot of comments all the time, people say that shit. When you start saying shit like, you weak and you ain't got no, you're not an expert. Hey, I never claim I was an expert. I'm just fixing TVs. And then I know more than you do because guess what? That's why you leave me them damn comments in your damn video. Hater. <laughs> and I ain't doing, I'm just the average person, I ain't doing shit, bro. But take the fucking TV apart. If you look at my videos, I got comments all the time, bro. All the time saying, man, I don't know anything about TVs or electronics, but I fix my TV using, by looking at your video. I love, sometimes that shit be making me cry sometimes. I'm like, damn, you know what I'm saying? So that's what keeps me going. All you motherfucking Nassau technicians and shit uh, trying to despise me and shit. You know what I'm saying? Hey, stop making some fucking videos, bro. Then we'll fucking see what the fuck you know. All right? All right. Anyway. So, what we're going to do is we to remove the old strips, which is really pretty easy. Um, they're like glued to the back of the chassis. And take something like this, and we're just gonna pry it loose. As you can have some grooves here. There's a groove here, 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 here. And as you can see on the new strip, there's grooves also. So it lines up pretty easily. What we're gonna do is try to get something in between it to get it started. Something that's gonna be much thinner. Just do like that. As far as we can go. Now this is a good strip, I'm actually not trying to tear this one apart or just uh, bend it too much. Uh, they're pretty flexible, so I can always bend it back, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna bend this too much because um, what's gonna happen, I'm gonna get somebody that's gonna be cheap and saying, oh, another thing that I wanna mention, people have been asking about how much does this cost, how much does this cost? Now, this is a 55 inch TV, so I actually, I actually, I charge by inches, uh, pretty much. Now, these new strips here, um, were like 60, were like $70 with the shipping and stuff on Shop Jimmy, okay, for the two, both strips, brand new, right, 70 bucks. Mm -hmm. But usually on a job like this, I would charge like 235, okay? So I'll make, a, so I'll make like 160 bucks, right, okay? Um, so like a 60 inch or a 65 inch, you know, you're looking like, you know, 285, 260, maybe 300, depends on the uh, grade of the TV. So um, that's how usually that I charge. Um, if it's smaller, 50 inches, maybe 185 for a board replacement, you know, stuff, something like that, you know. Me personally, I always go to Best Buy and Walmart and look at the prices of new TVs, even the cheaper ones, right? And this, I, this is how I kind of do my prices. Uh, I want to make at least a couple hundred dollars less than buying a new one of that TV of that same caliber. So that's what I try to do is pull some of this excess stuff off of here. 
It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be perfectly um, clean unless you're perfectionist and just want to make it, you know, that much cleaner. But you can pull some of that extra sticky tape off of here. Yeah, in this field, man, you have to be humble. I mean, that's why I've gone as far as I've done. I've been doing this for, working on TVs, man, for over 25 years, going on 30 now, since 1994. All right, and uh, if you're not humble, like those guys that be leaving them, them dumbass comments and shit, see, those are the guys that ain't gonna learn shit because as soon as, as soon as somebody try to tell them something, they're gonna look at me in their face and be like, oh, man, what you think I'm a rookie or something? I already know this, man. Come on, man. I've been doing this for 30, 30 years. You know, I never say that. Because what's gonna happen, what I learned, is that if you are, if somebody has, you know, this, let's just say somebody in the field or somebody in the, I'm sorry, in the shop or whatever is telling me some stuff that I already know, right? Let's just say I just started working there and he's like, oh, you should need to do this. You know, it's a backlash trip, you know. I'm not gonna get smart with him and be like, come on, bro. What do you think about rookie and shit, man? You know, look at my fucking YouTube channel, you know? I'm not gonna be doing stuff like that. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna listen to him and say, okay, all right, cool. I might give him a hint that I know how to do it. Like, I, okay, I, you know, I, I, you know, I've did this before, but I'm not gonna get mad with him because what's gonna happen is if you are listening to him, if they tell you some stuff that you already know and they say that you're listening to him, eventually they're gonna tell you something that you don't know, right? Okay, think about that. Because otherwise, if you're not listening to, if you're keeping smart with them, what they're trying to tell you, they ain't gonna tell you shit. Right? They ain't gonna tell you nothing else. They just gonna sit on the side, on their bench, do their work, and when you ask them a question, they're gonna look at you like you're crazy. Right? I learned that, I learned that, right? A long time ago. So, yeah, I just, you know, I do, I like doing it. Um, it's kind of relaxing for me, right? Otherwise, I'll be playing, you know, video games all day. I'll be across the street at the neighbor's house getting drunk and shit, so. I'm, I'm not even a drinker, really, but. <laughs> sometimes, man, you so bored, right? Like, hey, come on over, man, we got some drinks over here. Oh, okay, then I'll be over there in a minute, right? Then you come home and shit, fall down the stairs a few times, and <laughs> So, yeah, I'm not really a big drink, I'll drink beer. Um, but every once in a while, if I go out of town or something, go to my daughter's house, see my grandkids, whatever, and <clears throat> I might have a drink or something, you know, when we're out of town. But other than that, no big deal, right? So now we took the uh, tape off of this uh, strip right here, and it's kind of sticky, so we'll try to get it right the first time. I'm actually going to line this part up. And just try to get it down as far as you can. And line up pretty perfectly right there. Okay, I'm going to try to just hold this down. I'm sorry you can't see this on camera, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Just kind of like push it down as far as you can, but there's a little notch there. If you don't want this sticking up too high, because uh, otherwise you're going to get um, some shades of light. All right. So, that's it. That ain't going nowhere. Plug it back in. All right. I'm gonna plug it back in. Plug it back in. Plug it back in. Yep. So, uh, yeah. So I looked a lot of. You know, I heard. I had a pretty. I said my life was great. I had a pretty uh, rough life growing up. You know, I grew up here in Chicago, but that's not the reason it was rough. Um, even though I've seen, yes, I've, I've seen people getting killed. Uh, I have been shot at, okay, when I was younger and I was, you know, doing all kind of crazy stuff, right? I never, I never, fortunately, I've never been shot. Uh, one of my friends got shot, another friend of mine got killed, okay, but that's as far as the violence, you know, goes. But like I said, I've been in the military for eight years and I've also been to prison, okay? I did a, um, uh, 18 months, I'm a four year bit for doing some stupid shit. That was years ago. So yeah, so I kinda, that stuff, uh, you know, the reason I'm telling you that, that stuff, that stuff kinda humbles you. You know what I'm saying? It kinda makes you appreciate life, you know? And like, as far as the military, you know, have, you and I have somebody tell you what to do all the damn time and shit, and <laughs> right? Yep, but um, yeah, so, yeah, let's be humble, man. You know, don't, you know, be hating this. Be, 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 be a humble, not a hater. Right, my buddy used to say, "Be humble, and not a hater." Right. So, um, I'm gonna do the second strip over here. Now, this is a bad strip, so I don't even care about this strip right here. I don't care if I tear it up. 
right so let's see we're trying to find the middle of it and what I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the end right there I'm gonna start frying it off same way I did the other strip no big deal Voila. Pull the tape off the back of this. It's blue tape. And that's going to start right here in the middle. Right here. Put the bottom piece in first. Push it down. Okay, make sure it's in the groove. You want this push down as far as you can. Okay, let's excess tape over here. Let's pull that off. Almost forgot about that part. It really does not matter because the TV is not moving. It's not a, it's not a moving object. So once this is on here, it should not come loose. But be on the safe side, I'm gonna. excess residual tape off from the old strip. Yeah, it's pushed all the way in there, okay. Okay, make sure that these wires are, make sure those plug wires are flush all the way down because the, that big thick screen with the white paper under it, it's gonna be laying on top of that. And you don't want anything bulging up, okay. So let's go ahead and just fire this up. And see we can get both strips to light up if both strips light up we are in pretty much good shape right there we go strips are lit up Nice and bright, both sides. One, two. Okay, that's it. So now I gotta put it back together. And quite obviously with that crack and that diffuser screen, that main diffuser screen at the very bottom, um, you're all gonna see that through the picture. But I uh, really shouldn't be that most. I already told the customer, I, I've got hip on this and I always tell the customers with the type of TVs that uh, there's a, be a crack in one of the screens and you will see a line in it, but it won't be. She was okay, she was like cool with that. She was like, as long as I can see the picture, I don't care. Right, so. So, we'll go ahead and put our main diffuser screen back in. It goes on first. And the reason I got these gloves on because you can get fingerprints on the screen very easily. And like I said, you can act, you will actually see that uh, in the TV image. Um, on the TV screen, once you want, if you get like big fingerprints on here, you can't actually see that. Now we're gonna make it sure this is, this is even, and especially if you test the bottom of it, that's why I got these gloves on. You're, you're gonna obviously have to pick this up um, and kind of line it up perfectly. So I'm doing here, okay. Make sure that all the paper is inside and make sure that this screen is flush up against those LEDs. And that looks good so far. And we still have a spot over here because uh, for some reason, yeah, it's because of this crack in the screen, evidently. It has nothing to do with the paper. It is because of the screen, obviously. All right? So you will see a slight shadow on the one side um, I cannot find these diffuser screens. It seems like Shot Jimmy should be the main ones to sell those diffuser screens. I mean, even if they're just like, you know, 75 bucks, something like that, probably be worth it. You know, I couldn't really charge, I can't really charge a customer an extra $75.
you know, because it probably wouldn't be worth it for them. But I can always go in half, you know. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm for the customer. I'm, I'm for making sure they have a bright, nice TV. Put these notches, one, two, three, slide those in the chassis like this. There's little notches up under here, and then once it's in there, just flip it up and it'll click right in this white piece. So, uh, anyway, I want to try that. notches up in there. All the way up in. And then just push it up. Should click right in these white pieces. That's it, bro. Easy peasy. And I also want to give a shout out to all the lady viewers that I've been getting. Not because they're ladies, but they've been saying that I've been using my videos to fix their TV. I got a few um, few comments. Uh, at least their profile looks like a lady and the name looks like a lady. So, <laughs> hey, I'm going to tell you something funny, though. A guy left me a comment, right? I, well, a lady left me a comment, right? And... Um, I replied back and I said, uh, thanks ma'am, something like that, like thanks ma'am or um, something like that I said and the reviewer replied back and said, uh, no, I'm a man, uh, this is my wife profile on, on YouTube that I'm using. I said, wow. I said, that, didn't seem, that seemed kind of weird, right? Why would you, 
<laughs> Why would you make your own profile? But I guess he wasn't really like a YouTube watcher, so I guess he's having to come across my video and uh, on his wife's computer, whatever. But uh, yeah, I want to thank my ladies for watching. Yeah, I mean, I get a lot of comments uh, about people been asking me about the TV was just fine before, I just didn't have, like, I had uh, no picture or whatever, but when they put it, when they put it back together, they had lines in it or it was shaking on one side. And that's because the connectors need to be in. I don't want to keep, um, um, these things are so cheap, I don't want to keep unplugging this, I mean, unplugging this, because it might just come off one time. But as you can see, two notches right here on each end. Um, right here, let's look at that better. It's one there, see that little notch there, and a little notch right there. So on this TV, you want to make sure that you take the wire and put it up under the notches. Up under both notches. Come in on both notches like that. And it's a line right here. See that line? It lets you know that the clip should be. Now, see the part of that line sticking up? And one side of the line is down in there. That means that the, the, the cable is crooked. And another thing is to always check your. Can you see that on camera right now? I can zoom out maybe. But these are actual contacts. Make sure none of these contacts. I wish I get a clear picture here. <laughs> okay, yeah, there we go. Make sure none of those contact pins, you know, looks like about 100 or 200 of them. Make sure those contact pins, those gold copper uh, pins are not bent or broke or missing from the uh, connector, okay? Uh, when you're doing this, trying to push the cable in and pulling it back out and stuff like that. Okay, so make sure those are good and you should not have any problems. Same way with this one that's in there and then same way with the other side. Okay. Open it up, slide it in. Push it in as far as you can go. Pretty good. Clip it down. Right there on the black line. Okay. Two on each one. Okay, now the ultimate test of time. I'm gonna plug this in. And should power up automatically. Samsung, some over there. Screen's not cracked, that's plus. Right? Okay. And voila, there we go. And as you can see, we do have a, I know it's gonna look like uh I can, I'm looking, looking at my monitor, it looks completely different than what it does in real life. But you still can see a little dark shadow right here. Doesn't look as dark as it does on the monitor. Uh, yeah, but you can notice it and you can also notice that where those things got cracked right there. But don't let that discourage you uh, when you're doing this because a lot of times you just have a small crack. And as long as you don't manhandle that real thick screen, uh, that real thick clear screen at the bottom that goes right in front of the LEDs, uh, you shouldn't have any more cracks in it. Okay. Make sure my fingers are plugged in all the way. Double check that. Okay. Should be all good. I ain't gotta worry about that. Okay. And. done guys we are done so guys thanks for watching uh make sure you do subscribe for more videos and uh if i make another video before thanksgiving you guys enjoy your holiday spend quality time with your family because you never know when it might be the last time you'll see them right i learned that 
right so yes so anyway until the next one big dog